think this is the most important series that I've ever preached. Amen. The reason being because the times we're in. Your imagination is being captured and programmed. Yeah. Amen. It has been captured and programmed for, for years and years and years, but it's become more evident over the last 17, 18 months since the lockdown. Our imagination has made us divide against each other. Preachers have shut their doors down because of their imaginations. We're living in a time politically that they are dividing us as believers. I was watching the news a little bit this morning, which is something I normally don't do on a Sunday. And I was quickened why so many believers are divided. Because we watch one set of news. And they are capturing your imagination and programming you. Watch 2, 4, 5, and 7, and maybe CNN. So you get one perspective of the news. They were telling us how great Biden is. I'm sorry, you're an idiot if you think Biden's a great man. He is destroying our, our, our country. He is promoting socialism. He's destroyed our economy. And with a stroke of a pen, opened up Russia's economy. I'm not preaching politics, I'm preaching Bible. You listen to the news this morning and they're talking about all the destruction that Israel's done against the Palestines. And when you look at it from that perspective, you go, oh my God, how horrible. They showed the damage that the Israeli bombs did in the Gaza Strip. They're capturing your imagination. The Bible tells us that Israel at one time would be spread abroad. They'd be a people without a country. And it tells us in 1947 that they would become a country again. And supernaturally, Jews from all over the world and became a country again when they went back to Israel and claimed their homeland. It's not the Palestinians, it's Hamas. The Palestinian people are good. It's the Hamas that are Muslim terrorists that are being backed by Iran, which is backed by Russia, which according to the Bible, these are the two countries that will help usher in the Armageddon. This man that some of you all voted for, because you did not vote Bible, you vote your feelings. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for that. I tried telling you, telling you, telling you, and you, your stubborn resistance will not allow you to see the truth. And Christians all over the world are suffering because of that. They're not going to be happy until there is no freedom in religion. I had a woman yesterday, uh, not yesterday, but last week, meet me at the door because I said something about Trump. She goes, honey, Trump ain't did nothing like you said he did. <laughs> it's a woman that heard one side and was prejudiced and did not want to hear the achievements that that man did. Our imaginations being captured. We got Christians today that are citing and saying free Palestine feel free Palestine, turning their back on Israel. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Israel. And here as believers, I ain't turning my back on nobody. I'm praying for peace. But knowing that there will be no peace. 
What's going to happen has happened. It's going to happen. We're living in a time where I believe we're going to usher in the presence of the Lord. I believe that with all my heart because the prophecies are being fulfilled at an accelerated rate. Our government is divided uh, 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 by, by anti-Semitism. Never before in this country has that ever been done. This weekend, they were going around and they were looking for Jews to beat up. Amen. 2, 4, 5, and 7, and CNN never covered that because they want to capture your mind and pit you against God's people. Our imagination has been captured and we've been played. Our imagination has been captured and we've been, we've been going with the flow instead of educating ourselves. So, well, Pastor Mike, that's your opinion. It's more than an opinion, my friend. Amen. The reason why many people are not growing spiritually in every, other, every area of their life, not just that, but, but in every other area, their home, their mental well-being, their family, so forth and so on, because they refuse to have an imagination that will be developed. They hear something on the news and they get an opinion and say, that's it. How could Israel have done that? You can't, you, 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 you can't be moved by anything other than what you see. And what you see develops a picture in your imagination and that becomes a fact. And what they showed today was uh, uh, on the Gaza Strip, all these homes were destroyed, but they did not tell you that the Israelites sent in messengers telling them we're going to bomb these areas. Get out. And the reason why they did that, because Hamas do, do this intentionally. They put their bombs in a strategic place where there's children, daycare centers, everything else, hoping that the Israelites will not bum them. But God is in control. Amen. Amen. So here's what they did. I loved it, man. War is not good. There's casualties to war. But it is what it is. The United States is upset with Israel because they're coming back with greater force than what's come to them. And I, don't know, I was taught as a kid, man, when somebody, if somebody bullies you, you better beat him up bad so nobody else comes after you. And that's exactly what Israel's doing. Amen. So all these uh, uh, militants went down into the tunnels that they have. They have tunnels built in the ground to go into Israel so they can terrorize. So Israel just bombed the tunnels. <laughs> Got them all together and you know, d took care of business. I know some of you may not like that, may not agree with that, but that's your problem. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In order to grow spiritually, your imagination must be in line with the word. Amen. Amen. If your imagination is not in line with the word, you will be at aught with everything. Yes. You will live by fear. You will live by torment. Amen. And that's why there's so many, so many preachers today who have been tormented, have shut their doors because their imagination was not in line with the word. Their imagination was in line with CDC. There's some, uh, uh, yeah. 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 The imagination was in line with Fauci. The imagination was in line with the government, with the governor, but not in line with the word of God. When your imagination was in line with the word of God, you do all that you could do to stand. And you're not moved by what you see, you're moved by the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. I preach what, I'm preaching this message because I want to prepare you to stand for what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm not, I'm not preaching gloom and doom, but I'm telling you there's some stuff coming. Amen. You're going to go to the bank and try to get your money and there ain't going to be no money there for you. Amen going to be that one world government is coming and it's coming fast. They're accelerating it. Yeah. Amen. So you can get your gold, get yourself, do what you got to do, but you better trust in God more than yeah. anything else. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Our imagination, if you don't prepare for this, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to be unprepared for the future. Your imagination helps you prepare for the future. I'm going to be 70 years old this year. I am not prepared. I was not prepared for 65. You know why I wasn't prepared? Because when I was 14, 15, 18, 20, 25, 30, I couldn't see myself living to this age. But here I am. Unprepared. And I'm not the only one. A bunch of old goats in here are not prepared because you didn't think you'd make it past 18. But you did. 
Ooh, I got by the grace of God with that. Then you didn't think you'd live past 21. In my wildest dreams, I could never imagine what I would look like, act like, or be like at 69 years of age. I wasn't prepared because my imagination doesn't allow me to see that far in the future. I remember in the fourth grade writing a report what, what, what life would be like in the year 2000. This was 1960, early 60s, man. 2000. Man, I have no clue. I turned in a blank paper. Because that's what my imagination was like. And many of us today, we have a blank imagination about the future. The future is here. Amen. Amen. The Antichrist is ready to be revealed. Right. Amen. The one world government is in place. Mm -hmm. People are pushing the agenda. Right. And instead of finding the truth, we're watching the news thinking we're going to find some comfort there. Right. <laughs> My friend, especially if you watch one particular channel. And only one particular channel. I, I, I'm not a newsaholic. I'm not a news freak. But I want to get as many different opinions as I can so I can line up with the word so I can find the truth for me. Amen. 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 And I realize that much of what they're saying today is doing nothing but programming you. If you are not mindful of what's going on with your children, with your grandchildren in school, you are pitiful. Amen. Amen. They're, 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 they're trying to uh, jam something they call a critical... Uh, um, Race theory, and it, sound, uh, it sounds good, right. right? But it's deception and lies. They're teaching your children in third and fourth grade about sexuality. Yeah. My third, fourth grader don't need to know nothing about sexuality. Yeah. Listen, they're, not, they're capturing their imagination. They're not teaching, they're doctrinating them. Not just sexuality, they're using explicit, explicit words and explicit graphics to show them what it's about. And we're trusting them. That child God gave to you, you better learn how to protect that child. Raise that child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. There's so much that is going on in the world today and Christians have their heads buried. They're closing church doors. They're not, they're not, they're not teaching the body of Christ how to stand. And when this comes, man, they are going to fall apart. Amen. You know, we're, we're lined up. You know what? I am unvaccinated. I am free. And I'm not going to apologize for it. Amen. Amen. If somebody wants to get all that mess, God bless you. I'm going to tell you what. They're capturing the imagination of Christians. They're dividing Christians about that. Where's your mask? Where's your vaccination? Where's your passport vaccination? I got to get out of my face. Amen. Amen. If you want to do it, do it. But don't make me do it. I, I'm a free man. Amen. Right. Amen. Our imagination as believers has become the same as the world's. We fear the same things the world fears. And we're supposed to be serving a living God that can keep us, that can strengthen us, can empower us, can deliver us. When I first got saved, I, I read a book called God Smugglers. And there were these men that were smuggling Bibles into China. And they were going across the border and they opened up the trunk of their car and they had Bibles in their trunk. And as, as they opened up the trunk, they prayed, God, please blind their eyes. And they opened up the trunk and they saw an empty trunk. That left an impression on me. I said, God, I want to know you like that. Many years later, I went into China smuggling Bibles. And we went across to the border and had two suitcases. And they told us, do not go on the conveyor belt. Try to pass it. They hit my suitcase and they put it on the conveyor belt. They pointed. <coughs> God, I don't want to go to jail in China. It's illegal to own a Bible in China. It's illegal to go there to preach about Jesus in China. We got on, we got, we got on the bus and they blindfolded us to the safe house. They put it on the conveyor belt, and as it started going to the x-ray machine, I prayed, God, blind their eyes. Don't let them see that Bible, those Bibles. It was two briefcases, suitcases full of Bibles. It went through. I picked it up and walked away. God reminded me about his power. God showed, not to only read it, but I experienced it. 
What's wrong with our men of God today whose, uh, whose imagination has been captured by the devil? They never experienced the power of God. They went to a Bible school. They got a degree. They hung up on the wall. They called themselves pastor. Amen. Come, on. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. There's a saying, some sent and some, some just went. We got too many that just went. We need men of God today whose imagination has been captured by the Holy Spirit will endure the suffering that it's going to take in these last days. Amen? Tell you, anything ever happens, anything goes off, you better run to the church because this is going to be a safe haven. Amen. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you do not prepare yourself now when it happens, you are not going to be ready for the unexpected. Amen. You've got to expect the unexpected. Amen. The Bible talks about David. Everybody likes to talk about David, especially David and Goliath. Let's read what he did. His imagination helped him understand that his problem was not just the problem in front of him. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's lunch. He was going to go fight Goliath. Goliath was one person. He only needed one stone. But he was prepared for what was to come. And in 2 Samuel, the Bible tells us that Goliath had four family members. And back then, as today, they had something called blood revenge. You get mine, I'm getting yours. So David's imagination, he saw Goliath. But he knew that was not his only problem. So he prepared himself beforehand for the other problems if they come after him. COVID is not your only problem. Shutdown is not your only problem. Prepare yourself for the problems that are coming. Because they want to capture your imagination so that you shut down and become ineffective for the kingdom of God. We are in a time where our light needs to shine like it's never shined before. Amen. Amen. I want you to consider this. How many victories have you lost because of your didn't prepare? How many opportunities went by you because you didn't prepare? Because your imagination could, just couldn't see that far off. The enemy already has you. He doesn't care if you drink. He doesn't care if you do anything wrong. He don't care if you stay. He don't care if you stay in church and sing for the next hundred years. But if you got your imagination, he's made you ineffective. How many of in here, how many Christians today has their testimony become ineffective because they're bearing the same imagination as the rest as the rest of the world? Being short sighted. Our imagination hinders or releases the power of God. Your imagination impacts your faith. Many people are trying to exercise their faith with no imagination. You have to have an imagination that impacts your faith. This has been one of the things that confused Christians for hundreds of years. I got faith, but nothing's operating right. Because the first time you see something, the first time you hear something, the first time you experience something, you lose your faith. You can never lose your faith when your imagination's active because you know with God all things are possible. It doesn't matter. God can reverse this. God can turn this around. I'm going to hold on because the picture in my mind shows me that God is able. Matthew chapter 19. Your imagination will hinder or release the power of God in your life. You are where you're at because of your imagination. You may have faith to believe God for greater things, but your imagination has you there. Hallelujah. Some think they're broke because they have no money. No, you're broke because of your imagination. You don't see God gave you. You don't see God already gave it to you. You're just lazy and ain't doing nothing about it. Yeah. Amen. Bless me, God. He said, wait a minute. I've already blessed you. I gave you gift. I gave you ability. I gave you talents. I gave you a mind to think. There's plenty of opportunity. You, listen, you can go to Target. You can spend $500 on stuff that's on sale, put it on eBay, and sell it for double. Oh, that's too much work. People are doing it. They're selling $2 sponges for $4 because it's a deal on eBay. 
He gave you the ability to get wealth that you may establish his covenant. Boy, if I wasn't saved, if I wasn't saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> no, I tried, it didn't work. But if I wasn't in the ministry, the times that I'm, I'm devoted and committed to the word and to the ministry, I'd be, con- I'd be c- committed and devoted to building myself up financially. Hello? What's your excuse? Because your imagination just can't see it. It's easier to complain because I'm broke. No, you're broke because you don't have the imagination to. And the Bible says he gave you the ability to get wealth. I didn't say that. He said that. So why are you broke when you got imagination and ability? Because I've got the wrong imagination. Hey, man, I got the wrong. You can go on Amazon. You can buy parcels of stuff and resell it, stuff that they return. See, back in the day, we had, we, our hustle was pallets and flea markets. <laughs> it's all electronic now. Yeah. You don't have to leave your house. <laughs> but you have to give up your piss-poor imagination. And you've got to develop the imagination of God because it's holding you back from getting the promises of God. Let's read. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 19. Jesus answered him. Man came to Jesus. What must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And he answered. If you would be perfect. That is have what, that spiritual maturity. Which, accomp- which accompanies self-sacrifice and character. Go and sell what you have. And give to the poor. And you will have riches in heaven. Jesus has given him the key. To find the completeness that he's looking for. He said, I've got riches, I've got wealth, I'm satisfied, I, I, but I'm not satisfied. I've got riches, I've got wealth, but I'm not content. There's something missing in my life. What must I do? He said, go sell what you have. Give to the poor. Here's a man with an imagination that's not been transformed by the power of God. And come be my disciples, side with me, with my party, and follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away Grieved and in much distress, for he had great possessions. His possessions weren't the problem. His imagination was the problem. Jesus said, go sell what you have and give to the poor. Did he say give it all to the poor? But his imagination, man, I ain't giving all that. I won't have nothing myself. The man was giving nothing. And the Bible says when you lend to the poor, you lend to God and he will repay those of you that are selfish, you can't give your tithes. Those of you that are selfish, you can't give to the poor. Those of you that are selfish, and you can't give to the needy. It's your imagination. You're, I don't want to go there, but I have to time and time again. You know, you're, you're robbing God. You're robbing yourself. You're holding back and you're hindering the blessings of God. Oh, I can bless God. I can give, I, I, I can, I can give $100, but oh my God, I got a $100,000 inheritance. I'm not giving $10,000. Your imagination. God just telling you to bless so that you can be blessed. Yeah. What he was saying, what he was showing this man, your trust and your worth and your value is in your riches and not the kingdom of God. There's many believers today, their trust and their value is in what they have and it's not in God. Because the more you get, the more you get, the more you want, the more you get, and the less of spirituality you have. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember when Fred and Karen first came here, we were... They didn't look nothing like this. We were tore up. This was just an empty warehouse with a handful of people. And here's a couple that just barely got saved in the Billy Graham crusade. But yet whose imagination got transformed. Did not even know me. But they heard the principle of tithing. And if you think I'm talking about tithing, go home. Because that's not the subject of what I'm saying. Amen. I don't like talking about money because everybody thinks, oh, the church wants money. I don't want your money. I want you. Amen. But you know, we don't have you when you don't tithe. <laughs> Goes hand in hand. But anyway, they come up there. I think you guys were here like a month, if that long. And he tells me, him and Karen came in my office. I didn't have an office. I had a room. Man. It was... 
It wasn't much of anything. <laughs> we were struggling. Right? And he goes, you know, my, my mom died, and she left me a little bit of money. He says, I, I, if I'm embarrassing them, I apologize, but I want to use them as an example. He says, I want to give to the church what belongs to God. I was blown away because at that time I had people that had been with me for a good period of time that still weren't doing anything. And I've watched this couple over the years go through some stuff. Man had a job who was making good, serious money, and he had a developed a, a, an imagination. says, you know what, I don't need to be here. God's got something greater for me. Went back to school and drive on a yellow bus right, right. with house notes, yeah. car notes, yeah. mortgage, kids, yeah. wife. Making more money than him now. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> well, I guess it was easy then. <laughs> but they never dropped the responsibility of their role because their imagination didn't allow themselves, it didn't allow them to see themselves anything different than being faithful. So their imagination has blessed them above and beyond over these years. I've watched how God has kept them, how God has strengthened them, how God has empowered them, and God has opened up doors for them. Because they didn't follow the way of this man that was trusting his riches. They followed God. Your imagination will open up doors for you or will close doors for you. You may say, oh, I didn't know big thing. It is a big thing. Your imagination does not allow you to see the future. See, there was things that he was sowing into back then, whatever year, I'll just pick a year, 2010. It was way, way before that. But I'll just pick a year because all my years run together. I got 69 years that are in one, one room. Right. <laughs> Amen. There was a door that needed to be opened in 2012. They, 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 they sowed into it in 2010. How many follow what I'm talking about? And so many, our imagination is so short-sighted and narrow-minded, we just can't surrender to God. And the Bible says he walked away sorrowful because he had great possessions. Jesus did not tell him to give it all away. He says, I just want you to be liberal. Amen. I want you to be free. Go to Daniel chapter 3. Hallelujah. It hinders or releases the power of God. See, when things happen, what do we see? We see the end result. We see the end result. You're going down the freeway and there's no gas stations around. Your car's on empty. We see ourselves stranded on the side of the road. Oh my God, I'm not going to make it nowhere. I'm going to run out of gas. And we see ourselves panicking. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't have my cell phone. We start panicking. Let me share something. I went 50 miles dead on empty. Dead on empty. I came back from uh, uh, um, Gilroy or south that way somewhere doing a revival, man, and, and they blessed me with a check instead of cash, and I had no cash on me. This is before ATMs. This is before cell phones. I had nothing, man. You know, we had no cash back then. You had, dude. I hadn't even come up yet where I was able to get a credit card. And I looked at my gas gauge. Well, I knew I was low on gas, but I figured, well, I'm going to get up there. I'm going to preach. They're going to give me an offering. I'll be okay. I didn't expect a cash check. A check for cash. So I'm looking at, and you know, <laughs> if you know anything about me, when I get on the road, I get lost. <laughs> <coughs> so instead of coming this way, I went that way to South City. Past San Francisco, into San Rafael, I got turned around. I said, oh, my God, I'm trying to get to Hayward. <laughs> and I'm looking at the gas gauge the whole time. And it's going to run out of gas. It's going to run out of gas. I'm going to run out of gas. It's and it was empty. And I'm praying, God, please, please, just get me home. Forgive me for my ignorance, Lord. I'm just praying. And I was faithful, man. I, I gave to God when I didn't have to give, man. I, I was opening up doors in the future. And I'm praying, God, please bless me. Bless me. And I, I said, man, I got nothing, man. What am I going to do? And I lost my faith. Amen. And I pulled over somewhere in some gas station. Hey, look, dude, man, I'm on the road. I'm X amount of miles from home. I just need $2 worth of gas. I said, I got, I, got no, I got a spare tire, man. I can need my spare tire here. Well, that's what you do when you hustle. Right. Right? <laughs> so I gave him my spare tire. I got $2 worth of gas. And I made it home. 
I said, oh, thank you, Lord. So I went to get gas in the morning. And I tried to open up my gas cap. It was so tight by the vacuum. Such, it took two hands to open it. And when I opened it, and when it made that last noise, the Holy Spirit said, your faith was $2 short. My imagination was $2 short. I saw myself running out, and I said, all I need is $2 to get home. God said, no, you need a little bit more Jesus to get home. But my trust and my confidence was, I may not have walked away sorrowful, but my trust and my confidence was still in what I saw. How many of us are trusting and confidence in what we see and not in him? Because of our imagination. Let's read Daniel chapter 3. My imagination didn't make way for me, my two dollars did. I have, I've ran out of gas a lot of times, but I've never had to use two hands to take the gas cap off. That's what happens when your gas tank is sucking all the fumes and everything in. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. He said, Lord, he said, if you guys don't bow down to me, I'm going to throw you in this fiery furnace. Now, how many of them look at that fiery furnace? Oh, my God, I see myself burning up alive. All we see is the problem. They did not see a problem. Their imagination saw deliverance. Your imagination is what the enemy wants to capture, especially in these last days. That's why you hear day after day after day after day so many different reports about mask, don't mask, and you know, wear mask in public, don't mask, uh, uh, three masks, two masks, four masks. Amen. And, and it confuses. I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to wear a mask to be safe. I was watching the news the other, last night. And, and, and they, they found this guy outside. They're talking to him. He's got a mask on. They said, you're, you're uh, vaccine, vaccinated? He goes, yes. Are you wearing a mask? He goes, yes. He goes, why are you wearing a mask? Dr. Fauci said you don't have to. He goes, uh, just to be safe. <laughs> Here's the thing. The enemy has catched, captured the imagination by fear. Yes. Yes. And people are living by fear. So many states have completely opened up. Schools have been completely opened. Stadiums have been opened. There's no resurgence. COVID deaths have went way down. People co- being uh, 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 um, diagnosed with COVID had went way, way down past the point, past the number they said we, they would open up. But they captured your imagination. And they capture your imagination, guess what else they're going to capture? They're going to capture your will and your surrender and put a mark on you because you want to eat. Put a mark on you because you want some water. Put a mark on you because you're going to accept the standard of the world and not God's. Amen. A COVID passport on your phone just says you're preparing to receive the mark of the beast. That's all it is. You already got the spirit of the Antichrist. Many preachers that shut their doors have the spirit of the Antichrist. That just simply means anti-anointing. They're not walking in the anointing. They're not walking in the power and the ability because their imagination has been captured by everything around them. Our imagination is not captured by God because we're not in God. Amen. 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 We're in tune with the news. We're in tune with politics. We're in tune with other people that speak fear and control over us. Rather than we are God. The Bible says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm not bound or controlled by the things that go on around me. Are some people going to die? Are some going to be, lose their life? Yeah. Though I li- the, the, you know, the Apostle Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, even though I die, I shall live. I'm crucified with Christ, but I'm going to live. Amen. Our life is more than just this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and answer the king, Nebuchadnezzar. It's not necessary for us to answer you on this point. You know, he's saying we don't, need, we don't even need to take his consensus. We're just going to let you know what our position is. The fire looks hot. The oven is big. But we want to let, let you know what we think. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, he will deliver us from your hand. O king. Our God will deliver us. But if not, here's what they saw. Something beyond the fire. You got to see something beyond COVID. You got to see something beyond the shutdown. You got to see something beyond the mask. (coughs) 
excuse me, I hate coughing. <laughs> hey, man, I went to my great-grandson's baseball game the other night, man, and it was windy as heck, and sinuses came up, a couple of people, did you take a temperature? <laughs> Don't put your fears on me. Amen. You can't walk in the anointing. God bless you. Don't, bl- don't condemn me because I can. Amen. But if not, let it be known unto king that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. We'll not bow our knee. We'll not accept your theology. We'll not accept your ideologies. We walk according to a different standard. Right. Then Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Right. What's going on today? You t- people attack you. They're attacking people that aren't wearing masks. They're dividing the churches. My God. Full of fury because they would not bow down to his doctrine. Don't you care about everybody? Yeah, that's why I preach the gospel. Don't you care about people? Yeah, that's why I live by example. I'm not going to live a life of fear and try to tell you to trust God for prosperity, trust God for healing, trust God to save your family, but we're going to live in fear? For this purpose will the Son of Man manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil, except COVID. Except end times. No. He said a thousand will fall on your right, ten thousand on your left. He says, but none shall come near you. You don't understand the power of the God that we serve. We don't realize his goodness, his greatness, his ability within us. Because our imagination has been attacked for dozens and dozens and dozens of years. See, my imagination of God is, God's going to get you. Anybody have that imagination? Going to church and I was scared. I remember going in, in in the confessional booth. Oh, my God, I thought I was going to die in there. I swear he says, what have you done? My son, I, I, I don't know. I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know what was right. And he started asking me questions. And I started telling him things. And he gave me, I, the last time I went, he gave me, I kid you not, about 50 Hail Marys, 100 Our Fathers. And I walked over to the candles, and I look, I, I can't see all that. And I walked out. Because I was so fearful of the God that he was projecting. So my imagination made me keep running from God till I found out the goodness of the Lord leads to repentance. And my imagination changed about God. <coughs> when my imagination changed about God, my lifestyle changed. So Nebuchadnezzar says, we ain't bowing down to you. They tell Nebuchadnezzar that. Then his face was full of fury and his facial expression was changed to antagonism against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Liberals had done lost their mind. When it comes to, when it comes to today's politics, when it comes to, I, I, if you think, oh my God, Nancy Pelosi finds every Republican, and I'm not Republican, I'm not Democratic. Yeah. Amen. But she has fined four different Republicans for we're not wearing a mask on, on the Senate floor. But she was showing at the White House with about five or six different senators without a mask hugging each other. This agenda is about fear and control and nothing else. If you don't stop buying into it, you're going to go to the store and the bread is not going to be $5 a loaf. It's going to be more than that plus showing Mark. If you buy into this, you will show the mark. Therefore, they commanded that, that, that the furnace should be heated seven times hotter than it was usually heated. We're going to live in a time where it's going to be hot and hard emotionally to serve him because you're going to have to withstand some stuff. Yes. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not see the fire. They saw the deliverance. And he picked them up and threw them in there. And listen to this. The moment he threw them in there, he said, wait a minute, didn't we throw three? There's another one in there we did not throw. In the midst of the heat, the Bible says they bound them up and they threw them in there. In the midst of the heat, they got their deliverance. 
See, we want our victory without going into the fire. They got their victory by going into the fire. They were bound, but the Bible says that they were set free. Listen to this. And they, and they weren't trying to get out. They were walking in the fire rejoicing in the Lord. Why are you trying to get out of the trial when God's trying to teach you something? Why don't you just rejoice in the Lord in the midst of it? But my imagination sees destruction. My imagination sees destruction, so it will be. Amen. You live or die, have the victory, or are defeated according to the imagination you possess. Not by me, not by you. How many, how many ever felt like, oh, I got faith, but ain't nothing working? Am I the only one? Man, I believe in God for a miracle. I'm believing God for this job. I'm believing God for this wife. I'm believing God for this husband. I'm believing God for peace of mind. I'm believing God for this car. I'm believing God for everything. Ain't nothing working. It's your imagination. Because the minute things don't flip, the script don't flip the way you want it, you think God forgot you. We don't hold on and endure to the end. When is the end? There's no more reason to hold on. It's manifest. It's over. It's done. So when I get the victory, when it's done, when do I stop believing? When I got it in my hand. Till then, I'm going to keep on believing. I don't have to believe for something I already have. I withstood the trials. I withstood the temptations. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Your imagination dictates the person you are. I never thought I'd ever come out, you know, I, I thought I'd come out of the lifestyle I lived. Hey Amen. I lived, breathed, died the streets. I loved the streets. I thought that's all there was. That's why I didn't prepare for 69. Even though I got saved. But then a pattern had happened. Preparation was not a part of my lifestyle. Hello? Life is more than today. We need to be as wise as David and prepare for tomorrow. The Bible tells us to consider the ants. They don't have no leader among them. But yet they work. Ants don't stop. Amen. They prepare themselves for when it's raining, they go down deep and they got food. I had an ant in my cell one time, man, and I played with that ant all day long. Amen. I had some water on my finger and I made a circle. And he kept bumping and bumping and bumping and bumping into, into the water circle trying to find a way out. I let it dry up and he'd go away and I'd make another circle. <laughs> All day long, from lunch to dinner, I had an affair with that ant. <laughs> he never quit. That's why the Bible says, consider the ant. We give up too easy. That ant did not quit. That ant did not just, he got little tiny legs. I've been having all these imaginations about this ant. I look back, that was stupid. But it occupied some time. Matthew 5, 28, amen. So when I read that scripture, consider the ant, I realized, oh my God, I've been considering the ant. Hallelujah. Let's read. But I say to you that everyone who so much as looks at a woman, don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> Amen. And desire for her has already committed adultery in, with her in his. Wait a minute, you can't commit adultery in your heart. Let's talk about your imagination. Now, let me help some of you out here. <laughs> you ain't dead. Yeah. Right. Amen. If you're a grown, healthy man and you can't see beauty in a woman, something wrong with you. Amen. You're just a religious nut who's deny, denying the truth. Amen. Amen. You can look at a woman and say, she's cute, she's okay. Whoa, she's fine. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with seeing a fine woman thinking in your mind, she's fine. But do you adjust your rearview mirror to get a second look? That's the adulterous part comes in. Amen. You use your imagination to start to do things, see things. 
Amen. I've been in my car sitting there just watching and women walk by and I go, I'm a hand man. No, she's a looker. But I can't think of one time I looked at my mirror to see what she looked like walking away. In my mind, I know she looked just as good going as she did coming. So I don't need to turn around. I don't need to activate that imagination. Let me follow what I'm talking about. That imagination. He said, you don't even have to do the action. Your imagination could shut you down. He's not just talking about women. Men, women. Some of you women are worse than men. Amen. Ooh, honey, I saw this guy. He made my mouth drool. <laughs> wow. Listen, King David's imagination led him to sin. He didn't get an invitation. It was his imagination. Where is your imagination taking you? Amen. What's your imagination making you act like? You imagine no, nobody likes me. So you separate yourself. The Bible says he that separates himself seeks his own destruction. Amen. You see, our lifestyle is a sum total of our own imagination, not what people have done against us. If what people do against us determines where you go, none of us would be where we're at. I had more people against me starting this ministry than I did for me. But they couldn't stop what God said unless I gave up. My imagination would not allow me to see it. At one point, my imagination did not allow me to see it. I'm waiting for it to fall apart because I failed. It didn't work before. It's not going to work again. I even told my pastor, I said, oh, I'll just come back home. He goes, no, you can't do that. He said, God called you to be a pastor. And I said, I tried it before. He said, it doesn't matter. God called you to do it. You better do it. So I'm preaching, waiting for it to fall apart. It never fell apart until my imagination got a hold of it. Then when my imagination got a hold of my calling, all hell broke loose. Yes. Amen. 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 People started coming against me, talking against me, yeah. slandering me. Doing all that. I said, I knew it. So I didn't want to accept this. But my imagination made me strong. My faith is nothing without my imagination. As a man thinketh, so he is. Your faith builds you up, but you, I mean, your, your, your imagination is firing pin to that gun. Let's read. Matthew, uh, we read that. 2 Samuel, I'm sorry, chapter 11. David's imagination led him to his sinful behavior. In the spring... When the kings go forth to battle, David sent Joab and his servants and all Israel, and they ravaged the Ammonites' country and besieged Rabbi. But David remained in Jerusalem. Go back. Here's where many believers lose their victory. I'm saved. I'm blessed. God has strengthened me. I don't need to be as faithful as I used to be. Let me share something with you. There was a time my family and the church family was there for you no matter what. You just got saved. You needed the strength. You needed the encouragement. You needed the fellowship. We were there for you 24-7. Open doors, fellowships, everywhere else. Now you've prospered. You got a job, you got a family, and you ain't here for us when we need you. You know why we need you? Because this young girl right here needs you. This young girl right here needs you. This young girl right here needs you. This young man right here needs you. So all that was poured into you was poured into you so you could pour it into somebody else. But Here's what happened with King David. I don't need to go to battle no more. Because I prospered. I don't need to be a part of the community anymore. Because I'm busy. And I've got different friends now. 
you all were okay when I needed this support. We need you. Now it's time for you to give back, but your imagination don't see it. Because all you see is the circle and the lifestyle you think you built, God gave it to you. You didn't build nothing, God gave it to you. And the way that you show that God gave it to you, you be just as faithful and committed as you were the first day you got saved. Amen. Too many believers, man, they prosper and we don't see them no more. No more fellowships, no more, no more pastor, what can I do? Pastors, the family that needs help. Pa- no more. Right, right, right. Two ships passing. Hey, God bless you. Yeah, okay, we'll see you next week. Right, right. Yep. David did not go to battle because he didn't feel the need to. I got people who can do this for me now. There's people that could fill in for me. There was a time when, you know, if somebody was responsible for something, we had nobody to fill in for them. If they weren't here, it didn't get done. But now it don't matter. We got people, oh, somebody else will do it. Somebody else doing is irrelevant. It's your call, it's your responsibility, it's your role. It's your, your, your imagination is keeping you stuck and focused on what you built up and not your role in giving back. David was supposed to be there not for, not for himself, but for everybody else. He was supposed to be the first captain and the lieutenants and the ones fighting for him. There's my king. He's here with me. Let's fight for the heart of the king. He wasn't there. And because he wasn't there, he was in a place he didn't belong. How many of y'all been in a place you don't belong? Think, oh, I'm okay. Are you really? Are you really? We don't realize how quickly we descend and lose the victory. Again, one of the things that breaks my heart more than anything else, I see believers been saved for a long period of time. Instead of getting more on fire for God, they're, they get, they're more disillusioned. They're more dissatisfied. I'm just tired. How in the heck are you going to be tired of living a good life? Amen. I was tired of sin. I was tired of getting beat up. I was tired of going to jail. I was tired of waking up with a hangover. I was tired of getting beat up. I ain't never been tired in the kingdom. Amen. Do I get weary sometimes? Yeah, but I'm never cast down. Do I get discouraged? Yeah, but I'm not frustrated. How can you be tired of doing the right thing? Because your imagination ain't where it belongs. The scripture says, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. He says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. You quit seeking the things which are above. Your imagination is focused now on you, your career, and your little familia. Your little circle. I ain't talking about any one person. I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to them that are watching, them that are here. You want to get offended with me? God bless you. That shows you you ain't where you belong. <laughs> Amen. Because there will be a time I speak a truth and go, Amen. That's right, Pastor. Now it's like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if you don't know anything by now, I'm unmoved. Right. I am unmoved. If you don't believe that, talk to my wife. I am unmoved. Doesn't matter how many cabinets she slams, dishes she drops, meals she burns, I'm unmoved. Hallelujah. Let's read on. (laughs) She can laugh at it now, but there was a time, man, it was, oh. We're World War III and I'm unmoved. Ammonites country and he besieged Rabbath, and, uh, but David remained in Jerusalem unmoved. One evening, David arose from his couch and he was walking on the roof of the king's house. Now, you got to understand that, that, that in the Middle East, it's not like over here, it's hot. Right? And so, a lot of times, their, um, um, their roof was used as living quarters, especially for the evening, you know? Um, you know, in Oakland, a lot of the homes out there, they're uh, uh, Victorian homes. Right? And I remember as a kid climbing out on the roof, you know, open the window, climb on the roof, hanging out there because it's nice and cool. You can see everything. Uh, so that's how, that's how they were living. So he went on the roof because it was hot. When he's, when he, from there, he saw a woman bathing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. He wouldn't have saw her if he wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. 
If he would have been on the battlefield, he would not have saw that woman. He didn't belong on the roof. You don't belong where you're at. That's why you don't have the victory that you have. That's why you don't have the joy. That's why you're divided. That's why you're not happy about seeing the saints. That's why you look for excuses not to come to church because you're not where you belong. Evil company corrupts good morals. You lost the morality of the body of Christ and thinking you're strong enough to handle it. I am not strong enough to handle the ways of the world. Amen. I need to stay connected to the body. I need somebody to feed me. I need somebody to build me up. Amen. I can't go out there every day and surround myself with people that ain't saved, work, work at a job for eight hours, ten hours with people that ain't saved, and go fellowship with them afterwards, and then I don't connect with you. I'm in a place spiritually where I don't belong, and my imagination is not allowing me to see it because it's all about me now. I want you to remember we had to pray for a dollar to go get milk. I want you to remember we had to pray for gas so you could go get a job. How are you paying the body back that supported you then? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 When from there he saw a woman bathing and she was very lovely to behold. Nothing wrong with that. But he shouldn't have been there to see how beautiful she was. Now that was good enough. He could have went back inside of his castle or temple and she said, yeah. You wouldn't believe what I saw. <laughs> that could be the end of it. But his imagination started going. Then he inquired of her. Hey, go see, go see who that is. You know what he's doing? Adjusting his rearview mirror. Oh, yeah, look at that. His imagination took over. And you know the story from there. Killed her husband. Took her. Son was birth, son died. All of the problems in David's life can be traced back to the rooftop experience because he didn't belong there. Let me share something with you. Your imagination is not going to share with you and show you the problems you're creating but not being where you're supposed to be. You're going to wake up one day and you may have an Absalom. Amen. You may have, you know, I won't go there with Tamar. You may have problems and didn't happen then. The birthplace was the rooftop. The birthplace was being where you didn't belong and didn't rein yourself back in. Right? One of my old school songs, favorite songs is Slipping into the, dark, slipping into the Darkness. Amen. We don't realize it's happening. Amen. We don't realize we're slipping into darkness because our routine has not changed. Sunday I go to church, Wednesday I go to church. Been doing that for years, so everything's okay. Are you really here? Are you really, really here? When you're on fire, you move mountains to be a part of what we're doing. I always tell when Brother Charlie's on fire for God. No matter what it is that's going on, he makes a way to make it happen here. I don't care what it is. And there's other times over the past few years, he's doing something, he knew something was going on. I turn around, there ain't no Charlie. He's selling stuff out the back of his car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Doing things he shouldn't be doing. Wow. Being in places where he shouldn't be. Right. Your service speaks volumes what your imagination is telling you you are. When you're on fire for God, we don't even need to ask you. You know we're doing something. Let me share this with you, and then I'm going to end with this. Every year we've had, since this church has been in inception, during the summers, regular picnics and barbecues. And they've been good. It's a pogo contest. Winner here. You know? <laughs> Amen. Tremendous, tremendous memories were made there. But some of y'all imagination made yourself feel more important and more important things to do. But when that was needed, you were there. 
carrying stuff in the park, carrying stuff back, making sure every dish was washed and put away before you went home. And because of your imagination about who you think you are in the body of Christ now, this last year, we were not able to do that. Not because of COVID. I'm going to go back another year. The year before that, we were not able to do it because there wasn't enough people committed that were committed to make it happen. We're down to about four or five people that would make it work, and it was just too many people, too, much, too few people to make it work. So I'm going to ask you, where's your imagination got you? Listen, before people took off work to do that, because I ain't missing this. I am not missing this. Why? Because you needed it. Now you don't. I don't want to go back to what we used to do, but our barbecues are an integral part of what we are here at El Shaddai. We're a family. We're not a church that's divided by departments. We're not a church that's divided by sex. We're not a church that's divided by age group. The young children talk with me, and I talk with them. I don't talk at them. They come alive, and they get happy when they see us. Because we don't put them in a corner somewhere and act like they're not a part of the church. They are an integral part of the church. And Vinny, i got to apologize. I didn't realize it was you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He come up there hugging on me. I go, who is this kid? <laughs> I hugged him back, but I didn't know who he was. <laughs> but Vinny grew up here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And it's good to see they come back because they felt like they were a part of this. And people like him felt like they're part of this because the people like you used to be. We got a great work to do when all this is over. Amen. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to wait for it to be over. Plans are being prepared today so that we could become the vessels God wants to be. So where's your imagin imagination going to take you when the doors are open? Are you going to put your hand to the plow or are you going to keep pressing forward to your calling, to your desire, to your want? If that's the case, I'll tell you something. You ain't going to be happy here long. Right. Yeah. Amen. Because you're going to dislike the messages you hear after this. Yeah. <laughs> Did you learn something? Yeah. Come on, give the Lord a prayer. Hallelujah.